this like really nice simple layout, low maintenance as well. I deliberately used the broader, bigger pieces of wood at the front, smaller pieces at the back, and this gives you a really good sense of depth. This is a tip that you can use for aquascaping your own tanks at home. Hi everyone, George here, and very excited to bring you a quick shop tour of Scapers Lounge here near Frankfurt in Germany. I'm actually here to do an aquascaping workshop for the store in a 120 centimetre aquarium. I'll show you the empty tank and at the end of this vlog I'll show you what the tank looked like fully scaped. So let me know what you think about that. There will be a live stream of the workshop as well so I'll leave a link to that in the description so make sure you check that out as well if you're interested. So let's go and take a look inside this epic store. So I'm actually here with Yuri's. He's helping me out with the filming uh, whilst I'm here in Frankfurt. Uh, very grateful to him to uh, let me stay at his place and look at his beautiful tanks, etc. So let's just check out this epic wood selection. Straight away, very impressive. Great to have a really nice amount of materials to choose from for the workshop. Now, I love this kind of giant Wabi Kusa layout here. I think it's some sort of circulating water because I can see water's dripping down, but just beautiful. Really, really, actually quite big. It's about 60 centimeters, two feet long, two feet cube. Really love it. Okay, moving over to one of the largest displays here at Scapers Lounge. Beautiful Iwagumi style, massive pieces of Frodo stone here. Got some Monte Carlo used as an epiphyte plant there, attached to the Frodo stone. There's some crypts, some more crypts in the foreground down here. Some Nubius, lots of Rotala and a very impressive display and lit with i'm not sure what the lighting is on this actually there's quite a few light units in here i don't recognize so interesting to see different brands so this is the tank i'll be scaping i think it's 120 by 50 by 50 centimeters that's four feet by 20 inches by 20 inches for my american viewers moving over to another beautiful display here looks this looks about five feet uh, 150 centimetres, a uh, classic kind of two island with a pathway going in between there, beautiful use of stems, let's get a bit closer so you can see the colours better. Some Frodo stone there, lots of stems, Crip Parva here looking really beautiful. And then excuse the reflections, but you can just get an idea. Beautiful Ryoboku, which means wood-based layout. Now here we've got a classic kind of Iwagumi style, but with quite heavily planted, lots of stem plants in the back, nice selection of, nice variety of foreground plants there. A mixture of uh, Monte Carlo, Eleocaris, Mini, some Marsalea, some Buca Phalandra there, and loads of CA2 going in this one. Not, don't think there's much livestock in here, so that high CA2 isn't going to be an issue. But yeah, another beautiful Iwagumi style. Moving over, just get a bit of a panning shot for you. This is all the seating for the workshop. I'm not sure how many people are coming, about 30 or so. Let's move over to this bonsai tree dominated layout. It's Venubius on the trees. Again, Frodo stone. Looks like a cube tank, this one. Looks like about an 80 centimeter cube. Here we've got one just hardscape only at the moment. 
This one here looks quite freshly planted. Dragonstone, no, it's not Dragonstone. This is, uh, I think we call this spaghetti rock in the UK. Uh, it's got some Monte Carlo. Uh, there's a carpeting plant, Staragyni. And then it looks like Pogostamon erectus, the stem plant in the back. Relatively new plants here, so quite a bit of growing in to do on this one. But I like the way they've used the spaghetti rock. I've not actually seen it being used as a um, a full-on Iwagumi style yet, so good to see this. Oh, I really like this style here. Let's take a look at this one. It's like a forest style. The lovely use of the wood. I think this is Millennium wood. Just got the Hygrophila pinnatifida there, uses an epiphyte plant. There's some really small Book of Alundra, I think it's maybe Kedigang. And then uh, some more, I think this is Monte Carlo, or is it Hemianthus? It'd be Hemianthus, but just a bit larger leaf than normal. And some Liliopsis in the foreground there. But a real kind of forest style scape, I really like this. Really good sense of depth with those these pieces of wood here, thinner pieces towards the back to get this false perspective. So I deliberately used the broader, bigger pieces of wood at the front, smaller pieces at the back, and this gives you a really good sense of depth. This is a tip that you can use for aquascaping your own tanks at home. Here you go, another larger aquarium here. Bold wood again with the Millennium wood. The unique thing about this Millennium wood, it's kind of constructed of lots of thin vines all kind of together, which gives a real nice sort of texture, nice detailing. Beautiful. I think this is, a, I want to say it's Ludwigia, but I might be wrong. It might be a Rotala. Looks like an in between an Arcuata and a um, Rotala Hra. Not sure. Let me know in the comments if you ID this stem plant here. Beautiful fish. Nice use of uh, Book of Alandra here as an epiphyte. Um, lovely Anubius. Looks like Pangolino. More Monte Carlo. I um, only bought this gimbal yesterday, so excuse it if it's not um, as smooth as maybe it should be. <laughs> Just still practicing. Yeah. Beautiful scape, love this one. Okay, moving over to another kind of new, newly planted tank with a tree stump effect. Really like this. Lots of growing in to do. Okay, let's pan over to the left. Ah, this is nice. Another, looks like a 150 centimetre or five foot layout with the Talawa wood, I think this is called. Interesting lighting there. It's actually got, I think these are Altum angelfish. Beautiful. Probably outgrow this tank eventually, but at the moment they seem to fit the size really nicely. I can get a close up of these for you. like these fish they really suit the the vertical elements of the wood here and they matching the vertical stripes of the fish this is another kind of a lesson that we can learn from by using you know the form of the fish to match visual aspects to the aquascape so all epiphyte plants in here pretty much apart from the it looks like a uh, Cyprus there, the tall kind of reedy plant. Got some Lagonendra there as well, the kind of crypt looks a bit like a crypt. Frodo stone. Really like this site. Really nice simple layout. Low maintenance as well. <coughs> okay, moving over to a tank that Yuri's scaped this. 
a while ago as part of a workshop here at Scapers Lounge. Very strong diorama rock based layout with heavy use of the Hygrophila pinnata feeder as an epiphyte plant. Looking really great. Really strong layout. Got a mixture of juvenile cardinal tetras, emperor tetras, not emperor tetras, they're penguin tetras in fact. Um, I really like this stone coming out the top as well, gives another sense of nature. Looking for the top. Really nice layout, probably one of my favourites actually so far in the store. Let me know what you think guys, let me know which is your favourite scape here. <coughs> okay, another diorama style cave kind of concept. Looks like I had a few algae issues in here. Hopefully they can sort them out and restore this beautiful layout. Uh, interesting concept. I'm glued, those pieces of rock look like they've been glued together. Creating a very strong diorama layout. Uh, so, hmm? I'm filming now, yeah. There's Yuri's shout out. He's got his massive camera. This is upgraded. <laughs> What's this? It's a GoPro. DJI. Uh, DJI, Osmo. Cool, we can do it in time lapse on this. Nice. So, uh, Yuri's will be in charge of filming the live stream. I'm hoping the battery is going to last on the gimbal and on the phone. <laughs> it's a bit of a worry. We've got a ring light up here as well, so hopefully the live stream will be nice and sharp and audio will be good. Let's go and check out some of the, the dry scapes. Not the dry scapes, the uh, dry goods. Ah, ah, I wanted to show you these, absolutely. Beautiful little abicusers, each got its own little kind of shelf, all individually lit. Really, really great. And these are the sort of things anyone can set up at home. Virtually zero maintenance, very low cost. Yet you're still getting this real nice impact, this natural look, this natural feel. Yeah, I think it's really important in this day and age to connect with nature. You know, not everyone can afford a high tech or a high energy planted aquarium, but most of these will be in most people's budgets, I'm sure. Really, really lovely. And they also have the mini Complete tanks, some of you may have seen these already. Tiny, I'll show you how big it is. There's my hand right up next to the tank. So it's literally 12 centimeters or so, four inches, something like that. Five inches maybe. Another one here. Got the good old uh, Tropica cooler there, fridge for all the tissue culture, one, two grow plants. Um, over here we've got the on the counter and then over here we have a selection of t-shirts from moss cotton another scape up here looking good this is an interesting concept a bolted melted glass uh, this is interesting these keep on scaping t-shirts it's awesome Big dry scaping area. This is a great idea. So they can actually adjust the the size of the tank here. Make sure all the hardscape they buy fits. Loads more hardscape to choose from over here. Lots of Frodo stone. Lots of different types of wood. Pretty epic. And then if I just turn over to the left, we have an epic rock collection as well. And then there's another shelf below full of rocks. <laughs> so a real scapers paradise in here. Lots of different kind of uh, bonsai trees, different types of wood again. And then if we 
more fertilizers than I don't know what. <laughs> this is all of the Flow Grow fertilizers. This is a German company, really good quality liquid fertilizers. I, I've used, I used to use these years and years ago. Um, really, really had really good results with them actually. And um, just more and more aquascaping related hardscape goods, substrate systems, liquid fertilizers, filtration media, fish food, empty aquariums, Fluval Flex. <laughs> I've still got my Fluval Flex at home. I, I wanna, I'll want i probably do a video on it actually because I've actually completely neglected it for about six months. I've not done a water change. I've not, there's no livestock in it. I've not added any fertilizer. I've even turned the filter off and it's still looking okay. So I'm gonna do a video all about that. This is, I actually really like this. I just let the moss go mad, but I actually really like the effect. It's really natural. We've got some ADA products, nice sort of showcase cabinet here. Very nice. Okay, so the workshop's finished now. We've filled up the aquarium, the lighting, the, s the lighting and the filtrations fitted. Let's go and check it out and see what you guys think. Excuse the the colour rendition. It's um, very purple because of the twin star lighting. Uh, but you can get the kind of idea that I've gone for. It's actually, uh, regular viewers might recognise this kind of style. I did one recently like this in an Aquascaper 900. And I really enjoyed that style, so I thought I'd do it again for a workshop. Um, let's talk you through the plants. Foreground carpet of Eleocaris Mini, Monte Carlo. Hydrocotyl verticalata, Staragoni repens, Ranunculus inundatus, and then moving towards the midground, we've got Cryptocryne, Wendatii, and Cryptocryne pecci, Java fern there, Microsorum terrapus, Buca phalandra red. And the foreground carpet runs all the way to the back of the tank. And then we've got some Ludwigia palustris, and then you might just be able to see at the back there some Rotala green. And then some more Buca Falandra, Java Fern, Nubius Petite as well. More Java Fern towards the surface. And over to the right, we have uh, Rotala Rotundifolia as a stem plant. So I think I used about seven or eight pieces of wood altogether to create this effect. Let's have a look from top down, it's quite effective. You can see the density of the planting there. Really important to plant heavily in these setups, ideally with a lot of fast growers as well, which we've got with the stem plants. So I'm really happy with this. Had a really good uh, audience turnout, loads of great questions, loads of great help from the audience as well and uh, a really good live stream. I think at one point 500 people are watching it at one time. So do check out the live stream if you've not seen it yet. I'll leave a link to that as a card and in the description. So if you did miss the live stream workshop, you can see exactly how this was created. Okay guys, there you go. A tour of Scapers Lounge and a look at the aquarium I did as part of my workshop. Okay guys, there you go, a tour of the epic Scapers Lounge aquascaping store here in Frankfurt. It's actually Hanau, which is near Frankfurt. And a look at the scape I did as part of my workshop. Hope you enjoyed it. Let me know which is your favourite scape in the comments. As always, always interested to know your thoughts. Thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it. You take care. Keep on scaping. Cheerio.